Caleb Sweeney, and this is my 1988 Harley Sports Series. It's an 883, and I call it Little Martha. I love this. Welcome to my garage. So far, our experience up to that point had mostly been buying you know, used bikes and fixing them up, just riding things that were not projects as much as they were just like fun bikes. So I've got a lot of different bikes in my garage right now, most of them vintage, uh, but a couple modern ones as well. Behind me is what we call the lemon farm because at some point or another, every bike in there could have been referred to as a lemon. Almost any bike I get, I want to touch it, change it, do something a little different to it. This one is definitely a project. The Harley Air Machis are as hard to work on and have as few parts available as you've heard. And I think because my first bike was so old, so vintage, I'm not scared of getting into any other type of a bike. You know, I just learn as you go. The first ever bike that I bought, this is the bike that I had to find later after I sold it. This is my 2022 Triumph 1200 XE Scrambler. 1967 Kawasaki Avenger. 1989 Honda Pacific Coast. This is my 1974 Kawasaki KT250. Definitely have the Facebook Marketplace disease. I'm always on there scrolling. Even when I don't need to spend any more money or the garage is completely full up, I'm on there looking. And one day I scrolled across a older Evo Sportster and it reminded me of the bike that Dwayne Allman crashed. Music has always been a pretty big part of my life. Like most people my age, I got Guitar Hero one Christmas, and when I made it towards the end, the song Jessica came on, and I, it was like blew my mind, you know? I just fell in love with the music, had to learn more about them. I recognized that they had this love for motorcycles that I only recognized once I got into motorcycling. I mean, they would ride them all of the time. So I thought when I saw this Sportster and I had this idea, this would be the perfect way to kind of pay respect both to my music history and interest and my love for building custom bikes. It was at a pretty reasonable price, $2,700. It had a cracked case, so I ended up getting it down to $2,500. Went there, paid cash, and, and rode it home. When he started wanting to do this one, I thought it sounded cool. I didn't understand the scale it would um, it would become because it took so much work and so much effort for him and so much learning new things. At first I thought, well, I'm just gonna rebuild the bike that I saw that he crashed. But when I started thinking about, well, I wanna see myself in the bike as well. I wanna put parts on it and, and have it a style that I really like while paying tribute to Dwayne and of course the Allman Brothers. That's when the full idea started to come to fruition. What should I call this bike? There's so many motorcycle references, of course, Midnight Rider and stuff like that. But I kept coming back to Little Martha. It's the last song of the Eat Picture album, and it's one that he pretty much composed himself. As a tribute to him, they would play this song as the last song of their set. I just thought, well, this is perfect. It's, it's, little, it's a little bike, it's narrow. I'm gonna call it Little Martha. first things I did actually was got it down to a clean frame and then I had been looking at fenders online and found a really good 1950s style OEM fender from JNP Cycles. Chopped it down a little bit, put a tank from Lowbrow Customs on it and uh, just kind of admired the lines, got the shape right and then dove into the rest of the fabrication projects. I had never TIG welded before but I was just you know, jump in and figure it out as you go. He didn't have, you know, like a, a mock-up of it drawn out, so sometimes it was hard to visualize the, the concepts that he had, but it was fun to help weigh in on some of the decisions. I got to say, oh, I like this version better than this version. Uh 
So I'll kind of walk you front to back uh, on this bike and show you some of the custom stuff that I've done. First off, of course, is the peach on the handlebars. I bent that out of just steel rod and then TIG welded it. Right below that, we've got the custom twisted headlight mounts. So that's got the dual F and A headlight setup. Coming back, we've got the tank with the quote from Dwayne Allman. Of course, one of the big parts of it is the artwork that's on the top of the tank. And that's part of a full quote where Dwayne Allman is being asked, what are you doing for the peace effort during the Vietnam War? And he said, every time I'm in Georgia, I eat a peach for peace. The base coat was done by one of my friends, Jared Morris, who's at Custom Coders Atlanta. It's actually a three-stage powder coat. And the hand painting was done by my friend Chaston Brand. Uh, he does hand lettering and he did all of that himself with a brush. If we look right here, coffin air cleaner that I polished and put the quote from Midnight Rider on, the road goes on forever. So after I polished it, I did a metal electro etching process and I did the same thing for the heads. The shape of the tail light is actually just the classic Harley tombstone tail light, but I actually added to the top a 3D scan of a grave in Macon, Georgia, where the Almond Brothers used to hang out. The cemetery was actually the inspiration for several of their songs, not just the Little Martha song. And so I went and took a bunch of photos of that, made a 3D model, and fused it together with the classic Harley tombstone. I'd never used CAD before this project, and so they make a CAD that's actually for children called Tinkercad, and it's free online. You can scan something and then upload that shape into Tinkercad. It's tough, but all the instructions are out there and there are a lot of free resources to do it, so. Pretty much the only thing I, I didn't really touch was the engine. I, of course, swapped out the heads to look like the older style uh, Ironhead Sportsters because that was the one that Dwayne rode, but everything cosmetically is different. The electronics are all modern. I put an M unit in it. It really simplifies everything and kind of makes it as fail-proof as electronics can be. The first question that people always ask me is, do you ride it? And I think they're always a little surprised when I tell them, yeah, I do. It definitely gets dirty, and I have to polish it up pretty well before I take it to the next show, but it, it's a rider. And I like that all of the parts tie together and, and that they have a purpose. I didn't just put on as many cool parts as I could afford. I really thought about each different piece. Yeah. But the little blue specks in it that match perfectly oh, make, it, make it exactly. worth it. Oh, yeah, it's just, like, yeah, it's exciting. The moment people see it, they have a smile on their face. They light up, which is so fun to see, especially at the custom shows we've been going to. People walk up to the bike, even if they're across the room, they want to come see it. Oh, hey, we take my picture with this bike. It has that sparkle to it, so it catches your eye. Every time I throw a leg over that bike, I'm, I'm kind of wow, I, I really, like I built this and it's in my garage and I'm riding it down the road. It's almost disbelief, you know, that I could build a bike that this many people have reacted to and enjoy. I, I love this, I love you know, the head kit. Yeah, the head kit. I built it hoping that I would uh, have it ready for the Victory Moto Show in Savannah. Okay. I couldn't imagine that it would would garner this type of, type of attention. I, I built it you know, thinking it would be really cool to get into a national show like Hand Built or something along the lines. But truly, I would have been just happy if it got into our show down in Savannah. And to take it to the show in Savannah and have people who have been building bikes their whole lives come up to me and go, you know, pat on the back, wow. Um, one of my good buddies, uh, Joe Flores, who's built bikes for a long time, and looked at me and said, we walked in and saw that bike and we knew we were losing. And I, saw, I was like, what? I, I can't believe that. No, no, no. And then winning the victory, uh, best best custom in the show. I mean, it was just, I, I couldn't have dreamt it. You know, I, I didn't think it would go that far. And uh, I built the bike for me. I built it the way that I like things to look. And so to have that sort of reaction and reception to it was really awesome. If there's anyone who's on the fence on building a project like this, but they have the passion and, and they want to do it, I would say just do it. Just go buy the bike and figure out the rest later. And second, of course, the motorcycling community is great. They will help you. There's people out there who are willing to 
give you ideas and, and tell you how they would do it and what maybe is an easier way to do it, what part they would use, what part they wouldn't use. I think that anyone can build a bike like this. It's just a matter of whether you want to or not, whether you want to put in the time and effort. It's definitely all the resources are, are out there. I think this bike will always have a place in my garage. You know, it wasn't the first bike that I ever built and it wasn't the first one I ever rode, but it was the first one where I really took an idea from my head and put it into metal and put it into an engine and it worked perfectly. So I don't see myself ever letting go of this bike.